Hey everyone, you're here with Mark Bow at PerfectGardens.com. So, Brett asked a great question today. I have a five gallon bucket with air stones uh, for watering my indoor plants. Will this product evaporate or act funny sitting in a container? I never close the lid and basically he's just wondering what happens. He's also wondering if he got a 32 ounce bottle, how far would it go? So in this video, we're going to get into it. Are you tired of getting in crappy advice from your local hydroponics store or having to search all over forums to get advice that only takes you in different directions than solving your immediate problem? Well, join our membership for $50 a month. You get direct access to me. We'll connect on WhatsApp app. And just like this gentleman that started back in July with us, as problems arise, we are here for you. Okay, so right before we get into these questions, I want to just come to the website real fast, and I highly recommend go over to the safety and testing page right here, scroll down from the top, and click on a few of these buttons. PDFs will pop up showing you, actually showing you the lab analysis of these different chemicals, chemical compounds that were in the water and that over a course of 24 to 48 hours, all of these chemicals uh, had massive reductions to almost completely being eliminated. So as you can see here, this is their concentrated amount of these types of chemicals right here. And then over a course of 24 to 48 hours using a 0.2 micron filter, so a very, very basic filter, they had an over a 79% reduction test all the way up to 96% reduction test and so on and so on. You go to these other ones, you're going to have more testing of more chemicals. You scroll down to these other ones, same thing more chemicals, more that have that are proving the chemical reduction test. And the, so the chloramine, the hexamine and chlorine, I believe this one is the Aaron Brockovich, right? So the Aaron Brockovich movie where they sued PG&E for the chromium uh, leaching into the groundwater, and I believe it was chromium-3, and chromium-6 is natural. And so what happened, and I could have that was reversed as well. And so what ended up happening is they went over and uh, PG&E is marketing to all these people that the chromium that was being released through the production of power was the naturally occurring chromium uh, that was good for your body. So they were telling all the people that this chromium was good, but was actually what was happening, it was causing cancer and birth defects and obviously all the other symptoms and side effects of poisoning. So it's very interesting. So go through, check out the safety and the testing. Next, I would highly recommend is checking out the frequently asked questions. Uh, they have a lot of well-answered questions here that I think if you are going to incorporate this product that I have also incorporated into my life over the last 10 years, I have tons of questions that even far past this uh, Q&A that can answer. So let's go back over to the home page. I also recommend checking out the six part video we have on the YouTube channel that goes over the mineral book. So you don't have to spend 15 bucks, just save the money, go check out the six part video series. And they actually, you can listen to all the benefits of minerals for plants and animals and, and your human body. Okay, so let's go ahead and pull up this little graph that I pulled up. In the meantime, I'm going to play this video in the background, and I want you guys to kind of just see what happens to molecules as it, the cold uh, to the hot. So I'm going to just play uh, while I'm talking about this. So I'm going to go ahead and hit play. Just pay attention to the molecules, right? So in cold water, as it comes through, and as you can see, as the wa water heats up, molecules speed up. So just kind of have that in reference. I'll reference back to that in a little bit. Okay, so let's go ahead and see how far do each of these bottles go. So for drinking water, and this is always per gallon, if you are messing with tap water, so the tap water or well water, and you wanted to clean your water and remineralize your water, the two-ounce bottle will clean and remineralize 15 gallons of water, okay? So the 8-ounce bottle will clean and mineralize 60 gallons, the 16-ounce will do 120, and 32 ounces will do 240 gallons. If you're using RO water for drinking water, you will add in 2 mLs per gallon. So over here for tap water, you're using 4 to 5, and 4 to 5 because you might live, be living in the city, 
dealing with extremely recycled water. And in that case, you're probably going to want to put 5 ml. If you're living in a rural area, you're just going to kind of want to know your area. If you think your area is a lot dirtier water or just recycled water, uh, you might want to go with 5, but for the most part, 4 ml will be sufficient. And 5 ml is equal to 1 teaspoon. Right over here, it's 2 ml because you don't have to clean your water anymore. All you're doing at this point is adding minerals to water. So for the 2-ounce bottle, it's actually good for 30 gallons. The 8-ounce bottle is good for 120. The 16-ounce bottle will be good for 240 gallons. And the 32-ounce bottle will be good for 480 gallons. Okay, so for your plant. If you're dealing with tap water, what you're going to be doing is, once again, cleaning and remineralizing your tap water. But for plants, you're going to be using a lot less than what you'd be using for drinking water. You'd be using 1 ml per gallon. So the 2 ounce is actually good for 60 gallons. The 8 ounce is good for 240 gallons. The 16 ounce is good for 480 gallons. The 32 ounce is good for 880 gallons. If you're using RO water and you're, once again, just treating your RO water, uh, you might just need to use 0.5 to 1 ml per gallon. And at that point, if you're using 0.5, the 2 ounce is good for 120 gallons, 480 gallons for an 8 ounce, 16 ounce is good for 880 gallons, and the 32 ounce is good for 1760 gallons. Anyone that needs to do more than a thousand gallons, go ahead and email me at admin at perfectgardens.com and we can talk about special pricing for larger sizes and we can just talk about how much water you're using through your grows on a yearly basis and just talk about larger quantity. So next question was, will it evaporate away? No, drops of balance will not evaporate away. What's really cool about drops of balance is that once you add it into your water, the minerals will keep your water clean indefinitely or until the minerals are used up. And the only way the minerals are used up is if more toxins or other man-made chemicals are reintroduced back into the water. So people that are survivalists or interested in prepping, this would be also a great product for you because a lot of people, what they do is they go and try to get large water storage container and then just store a large amount of water. Really, it's a, you can make your life easier. Just be close to a water source and then have enough minerals there so that you can clean that water source. So there's two ways of prepping, different ways of doing it. For me, what I always like to do is have a RO system set up on a float valve going into a 50-gallon reservoir, bare minimum, or tap water going in on a float valve on a 50-gallon reservoir, bare minimum. It could be a brute trash can, whatever it is. I normally like to have that water outside of the grow room so that the water is not getting warm. Warm water carries less oxygen. I think that's just a huge component to water and water staying healthy. Next, I normally like to treat my water. Because of how drops of balance work, it's not like a fertilizer where the wrong type of algae will grow. The algae actually that will grow in the mineral water is blue-green algae, and blue-green algae is extremely healthy algae and believe it or not blue green algae actually increases the oxygen carrying capability in the water because it's releasing the oxygen to the water through photosynthesis so i know once i add the minerals into my main reservoir the water will stay clean and mineralized until i use that water for later it is 100 percent okay to use drops of balance to treat your water before watering or fertilizing every single time. I have talked about the law of minimum and the law of tolerance quite often. And if you want your fertilizer to be better, you're going to add in the trace minerals. Why? It's because just like how I talked to you about the before, Leiborg's a barrel, right? To make these other minerals available, it's not the maximum amount of minerals, but it's the minimum mineral. The, oh, that's the wedge on the barrel, right? It's the minimum mineral available in the system that is holding back the water or the barrel from being able to fill up. And if you increase your trace minerals, it's going to make the availability for all your other fertilizer available. And I've also shown you that video about the bodybuilders, right? The bodybuilders take a lot of steroids and because the 
these steroids are basically salts and different types of man-made chemicals, when they go into your body over time, they accumulate in your liver, your kidneys, throughout your entire body. And so over time, your blood coagulates because you have a pH imbalance, you have malnourishment, you have other issues. And so when you see that video of the bodybuilders taking their blood under a live blood microscope, because of the negative ionic charge of the minerals, the blood's able to flow freely. And I always like to show people, right, when all the blood is coagulated, you reference that as nutrient lockout. And then when the fertilizer is flowing and dissolved in the water and the plants are taking it up, that's like having a negative ionic charge. Although Drops of Balance isn't the end-all, be-all product, I talk a lot about microbiology. And I talk about the importance of establishing uh, healthy, beneficial bacteria in your system. And it's not also not just about adding in these beneficial bacteria and fungi into your water system or hydroponic system or whatever. You have to rebuild some level of a structure within your growth system, normally within only three months, because a lot of you guys if you're growing hydroponically, you're flipping your media every single time or rewashing it. So every single time you disturb your media, you completely destroy all of the work that those fungi and bacteria built to establish a colony. So you're kind of restarting every single time. And like how I've shown to you before in other videos through the brochure with the Drops of Balance, you have four main components for reestablishing your beneficial bacteria and fungi in creating a, a living biology in your system. You have your plant release sugars and through exudites that communicate to the fungi to go and retrieve specific minerals. But those minerals are not available until the bacteria produces coenzymes that make those mineral bioavailable. Then those fungi go and retrieve those minerals and bring them back to the plant. So without having these very basic components of minerals, beneficial bacteria, fungi, and and sugars, a living system is very difficult to get established. Actually, the next part is actually having a decent pH as well, which is also important with drops of balance. Your water has to be under 7.0 pH. If it's above 7.0, that will neutralize drops of balance and it will no longer work. The main thing that drops of balance really does is it immediately creates an environment for beneficial fungi and bacteria to take hold. That's really what drops of balance does. That's the main thing, and that's really what is the main issue with our soil systems and really anything out there nowadays is because we have such a high amount of man-made chemicals and fertilizers and phosphorus and all these other issues that we have been laying on our soils for so long that everything is dormant. It destroys worms. Worms don't want to be in the environment. Beneficial bacteria and fungi don't want to be in the environment. Because we're putting in one thing or other, it creates a bacterial dominant environment. It creates a fungi dominant environment. And before you know it, everything starts going haywire and our entire microbiology systems begins to shut down. I highly recommend people to check out Teaming with Microbes. It's one of the best books. I love re-listening to this book normally at least once a year. It's one of my favorite books. It just reconnects me. Another great book is Silent Spring. Oh my goodness, guys. It was a book written in the 60s or 70s. My father told me to read it about 10 years ago, and it really impacted me, not just behind our complete blatant disregard for human health, Although what really astonished me was the level of impact down to the parts per billion level that chemicals and how chemicals can affect our DNA and continue to keep affecting generations, two, three generations down the road. This is where I've also come to really realize how much water and our own souls kind of can remember chemicals. Another book is The Hidden messages in water. 
once again, these three books, guys, I'm telling you, man, you have got to check these three books out. Also, the one that's on our YouTube channel already. These four books will 100% change your life on how you look at water, minerals, the power of minerals, and the role. And then you also will really, you'll look at the microbiology within our gut. You'll look at the microbiology on the living soil. and You'll really start to take a huge appreciation to how these things work. A lot of people don't know that the fungi actually release acids. And why is that significant? Is that every day where if you're running the hydro system, you are adjusting the pH of your water a lot of times up and down messing with it oh gotta have 5.8 gotta have 5.8 you know searching for that ideal ph range and the truth is is the ideal ph range is constantly changing throughout the day and the night the plant and the all the biology and the soil they all want to work together constantly and it's us that goes in there and screws it up so my point to this guys is just remember drops of balance does an important function it cleans the environment and it remineralizes environment. I hate to call it even the food, but it gives the minerals, the specific types of minerals that microbiology needs and lives and thrives on because of really cation exchanges. And I don't want to go too deep into the science. If you want me to go deep into the science, we can talk about it on an individual. I just don't think it's absolutely necessary. But just understand that these ion exchanges, these positive and negatives, right? These magnetic spheres that are around our body, around the earth, around every single living organism and being out there. And I'm telling you, every trees, everything is living out there. If you don't believe me, go take some anawaska or a heavy trip of acid or mushrooms. And I'm telling you, you can see the vibrations of everything out there. And you'll realize that everything is constantly living. There's a mag magnetic field that is constantly pulling in energy and pushing away energy. So just to reel it back in and wrap this up, remember that if you are going to use this product, you are going to want to reduce the parts per million of everything else that you're using, especially if you're using fertilizer companies. Their natural parts per million are going up to 2,000, 2,500, 3,000 parts per million. If you use Drops of Balance in conjunction with a full regiment feed of these other nutrient lines, you will most likely kill your plants okay drops of melons will make these fertilizers as close to a hundred percent available versus what it is now not really available. They have to put in 3,000 parts per million to force the plant to take it up. Remember that that 3,000 parts per million is way too high because it's a salt compound, not a mineral compound. So when you add in the drops of balance, it's going to make all these salts readily available and you can over mineralize and stunt your plants because of all this cation electrical charge experience. So make sure to reduce your fertilizer. So once again, our water, tap water, add in the drops of balance, agitate the water for a little bit, let it settle, then add in your fertilizer. I'd probably recommend to cut it in half, maybe even a little bit more. Give it to your plants and then wait a day or two or go through your regular nutrient feed cycle or schedule and then slowly watch your plants. And the second you start to see a little bit of tip kern, back it off because you know the plants can't take up any more than that. And that's how you start to really fine tune your feed schedules and is one of the best ways to maximize the whole fertilizer input direction because there's multiple things you have to do, right? Create a, grow, a healthy grow environment. That's a huge component of it. Another component of it is the watering. Another component is the food, right? So there's different components. The One of the best ways to really maximize your feed schedule is to watch the leaves. Don't burn your plants because remember, the leaves are photosynthesis. But you, if you really do want to push it, you're always looking for just a touch of tip burn, in my opinion. Okay, thank you so much. I hope this video was interesting and helpful. Have a great grow, everyone. Please like, share, and subscribe.